We are continuing the story of Jin Hyuk, whose favorite game turned into reality, and he is using his game knowledge to get super strong as soon as possible. If you haven't watched the previous part, the link is in the description. Today's like goal is 500 likes. So, please hit the like button to help reach the goal. Awakened Association in Seocho Dong. Jin Hyuk went there to prove that he had passed the second test. 1.00 p.m., the exact time promised. Jin Hyuk looked around after checking his phone. Now it is almost time. And just as he thought that, Hyung. Appa. Here. Over here. Two people were waving their hands as they approached him at the entrance. It was Lee Taemin and Yu Yeonhua. Considering the time, it hadn't been too long. But why? Jin Hyuk felt happy seeing the two of them. Jin Hyuk walked out of the association. However, there were other people besides Lee Taemin and Yu Yeonhua. The person he had asked to take care of the Black Crow Guild, Kim Hee Wong. Appa, do you know this man? Hyung, that person, isn't he the secretary of the Black Crow Guild? Lee Taemin and Yu Yeonhua asked with anxious faces. The two of them only had terrible memories of that guild. He could understand. They could not help but react like this since they didn't know the circumstances. It is fine. Fellow people I know. Now that this has happened, they should start getting to know each other. There was something they needed to do for the future. Jin Hyuk introduced them to each other. And, of course, he changed the information slightly. For example, Elise had hidden her identity and referred to herself as a player from the North. There would be an uproar if they knew that she was the true ancestor. Lee Taemin and Yu Yeonhua, who were initially skeptical, nodded their heads. The guild side will be handled by Kim Hee Wong. Yon Hua and Taemin also can contact him when you have time. He'll handle everything from dungeon recruitment to various conveniences. Yes, just contact me. If you are acquaintances of the president, then I will do anything to help. Kim Hee Wong clenched his fist. The guy had said that he was abused while working below Shin Gunsu. Now that he was free of that man, his expression had brightened. Wow. So, is Hyung the Black Crow Guild Master? To the world. It is this friend, but I am the one who actually runs it. Hyung, you attacked the ruins and took a guild into your grasp in just a few days. Are you really a human? No. Lee Taemin seems to be at a loss for words. He knew that Jin Hayuk was a veteran but wasn't this like breaking all the limits. He didn't have much to say other than calling this whole thing crazy. At the same time, his heart began to race wildly at the fact that he was acquainted with such a monstrous person. Meeting Hyung is the luck of my life. Although large guilds and rankers in the world were fighting each other for supremacy, when compared to Jin Hyuk, they were all ridiculously weak. It was like joking about calculus in front of Stephen Hawking. No matter what happens, I will believe you till the end. Lee Taemin had made up his mind. While Kim Hee Wong was talking, Jin Hyuk looked at Elise. And you... Seeing her with pouting lips, he sighed. No. Let's not talk. Why? Why? I didn't even do anything. But you are the one poking me. Is it even normal to blow things up because you got called as a kid? When he heard this news from Kim Hee Wong, he doubted his ears. Just for that reason. Shit. The entire nation would return to the Stone Age if all Koreans had a personality like this. More than anything else, you have lived for thousands of years. Can't you not get angry at such provocations? T that It is because no one provoked me until recently. You are amazing. For real. The selfish queen. Vampires weren't just plagued with pride and high self-esteem, but the princess disease too. Jin Hyuk clicked his tongue. I need to go hunting now. Get into the ring. Uh? Can't you hunt alone? Because it is hunting, we need supporters. Ah. Uh. And don't worry. If you help this time, I will give you a good rest. This time, he needed Elise's efficiency on his side. But is there any place left for hunting? They said all the guilds have monopolized them until the third floor. The Tower of Trials reached up to the 50th floor. In actuality, the Tower of Trials did not only have 50 floors. Jin Hyuk smiled. From now, I will show you why a veteran is a veteran. At the Lake of the Moon on the first floor of the Tower of Trials. It was a location that boasted a beautiful view. It was said that a moon floating in the night sky would look like it was also below the surface of the water. 
However, no one would go to that place despite such a name. It was obvious. There was no time to leisurely enjoy the view when the survival of mankind was at stake. While it was more beautiful than any other place, it was also the most lonely. Lake of the Moon. But then, someone approached the lake. It was Jin Hyuk. This too. It has been so long. When his level was low, he used to often come here. After crossing the middle point of the tower, he barely ever came. So seeing this again was lovely. You seem to have good taste. But what do you mean you will hunt here? Elise's voice came out of the ring. Look here. Jin Hyuk smiled as he walked along the edge of the lake. He didn't come here to just take a midnight walk. He was here to find something. His footsteps quickened and his eyes moved around quickly. Surely in here. As I thought, Jin Hyuk, who found a statue that resembled a carp, went stiff. Although it was only one of the twelve statues on this lake's shore, this particular one served a different purpose. Jin Hyuk reached out and traced the sculpture. He traced his fingers across its whole surface, edges, and found a hole. Oh, is there a secret button in it? If it was that easy, anyone would have noticed it immediately. Wouldn't it be too funny for veterans to grow by doing such easy things? The number of people who found this place exceeded a three-digit number. It was even mentioned within the community from time to time. However, despite the rumors, no one could find the key that fit the hole. That was one thing that couldn't be done. It isn't unlocked with a key. Lake of the Moon In accordance with the location's name, the method of unlocking the statue's secret was a bit special. Jin Hyuk covered the hole with his palm blocking the moonlight. And as he removed his palm, the moonlight shone its light into the hole. Nice. Jin Hyuk used his palm to control the amount and angle of light entering. Calmly. If anything was out of sync, he wouldn't be able to get what he needed. Once, twice, and again. The moonlight touched the hole in a peculiar rhythm. And right at that moment, the whole lake began to vibrate. Just like Moses divided the Red Sea, the lake's water divided itself into two. The terrain had changed completely. Now where do I go? Jin Hyuk went down the long stairs leading to the lake's bottom. This was a hidden layer that had never allowed humans to enter. Therefore, it was a place that was filled with mystery. Finally, you have entered the first underground level in the Tower of Trials' first floor. The underground was one of the hidden places in the Tower of Trials. Finally, he reached a customized hunting ground where he could grow. You can come now. Elise looked around in disbelief. Oh my. How could there be such a space under the tower? She seemed shocked. The situation must be so surprising since her red eyes were wide open. What do you think? Uh? Little by little, don't you think the contract with me was a good thing? Well, I don't think what you said back there is complete nonsense. Little, very little. It is becoming believable. Elise answered while avoiding Jin Hyuk's gaze. She still had her pride to take care of, so Jin Hyuk didn't really care before a sudden thought entered his mind. Who do the beings of the tower think of the players? The game had become a reality, but... Were they just part of the data in the game? Or did the giant world of the Tower of Trials exist somewhere outside Earth? There were too many possibilities, but no clear answer. Because this wasn't something that you could find on just Google. However, if it was Elise, who had been alive for thousands of years, Perhaps she may have the answer. Elise, there is one thing I want to ask, Jin Hyuk said, but... The words that came out of his mouth weren't Korean. No, it wasn't even a language. It was just a combination of tones that were unpleasant to the ear. What? What is this? Such scary voices. Elise groaned as she stepped back. As expected, this happened? He had wondered how he could resolve the doubt regarding the incongruity between the players and the residents of the tower. But they had blocked the exchange of information. A simple but sure way. No. Nothing. It was nothing. It was still a good thing that he learned that he would not be able to talk about the existence of the tower and its denizens. It must have been blocked. Jin Hyuk took out the frozen tears and twilight dew. Before he started this hunt in earnest, he needed to raise his magic. Twilight Dew is brought in contact with the frozen tears. The second thawing begins. With a warm light and sizzling sound, the magic began to seep into Jin Hyuk's body. 
Magic increases by plus 18. Nice. With this, the second thawing was successful. The difference appeared right away. Phew. Stable breathing and magic flowed smoothly. Maintaining Elise's form outside was also more comfortable. Well, he can just be comfortable in general now. In terms of levels, it would be close to around level 6. I want to try it out quickly. He wondered how many unique abilities and skills he could use with his increased magic. There was a reason why the first underground floor of the Tower of Trials was called the Spawning Ground. It was because the monsters here constantly crawled out of the abyss. Insects with black skin, ground beetles that were the size of a tiger. Their dozens of legs moved quickly as they narrowed the distance. Additionally, all of their levels were over 20. It meant that they were all strong. As the distance got closer, the insects jumped to attack him. However, just before their sharp claws and teeth even touched him, Unique ability Blessing of the Stars is activated. A ray of light fell from the lake. It was Teresa's power that could grant protection from the constellations. Magic defense of monsters reduced by 30%. Physical defense of monsters reduced by 30%. The insects twisted in place as they suffered. Having lived in darkness for too long, the light was something they could not handle. From their perspective, their eyes must be burning. And Jin Hyuk wasn't the kind of person who would stand still with his enemies defenseless. As expected, worms need to be burned to taste better. Crispy on the outside and soft on the inside with the right amount of heat. Jin Hyuk's shoulders were slightly tilted as the fire flared up. The insects were crawling on the ground. Is it roughly done? The moment he said that. They are coming again. Elise glanced behind them. Suddenly dozens of new insects were crawling up. Don't just talk and show your skills too. Shouldn't you work for your meal? What? To use such a noble body for those lowly. A noble person cannot look at the sunlight, so should I keep her in the ring forever? She still hadn't fixed the habit of looking down at everything from her throne. I once was the queen of an empire, and when I opened my eyes, I turned into a Sudra of India. At Jin Hyuk's threats, Elise trembled. She realized... That whining would make her life miserable. F fine I will do it. Elise activates Levy. Bloodbind. Woong. Drops of blood appeared in the air, creating a large circle of red liquid. In the blink of an eye, the insect's bodies hardened. It was a skill that increased their defensive stats. No matter how much they were just giant insects, it was still a sight that made her cringe. Now, she had to end it. Jin Hyuk grabbed his dagger and approached them. Worth using, though. She didn't kill them, but was acting like support. The experience would be monopolized by the person who delivers the final blow. It was for this reason that he held onto Elise. Slash. His dagger cut the insects down as their heads flew off. Next, and then the next one as well. As long as their movements were sealed, dealing with the monsters was a piece of cake. Level has risen. Level has risen. Level has risen. His level kept going up as his status window shined constantly. Ha <laughs> ha. Jin Hyuk smiled. It was so fun to run wild as he pleased. He thought he would die from waiting for things to get done. I think I was stressed out because of the restriction of holding on to LV1. But he didn't have to do it anymore. Finally, he can satisfy his thirst for growth. He saw new insects coming up. Don't act this time. You want to do it yourself? Yes. I want to test how far I can use the ability with the magic I have. Jin Hyuk infused magic into the dagger. Unique ability Sword Grave is activated. The swordsman's talent permeated his body, and he could feel his entire senses becoming sharper. His heart was beating fast too. For the first time, a proper fight. Please, please do not stop until I take you all down. Tat! Jin Hyuk moved. Inside an old-fashioned castle that would have been suitable for the Middle Ages. Here, America's Titan, Europe's Olympus, China's People's Republic, and Korea's Father of Fighting were present. The representatives of those seven guilds were here with a single purpose. They were to hold a meeting regarding the attack on the third-floor boss, which had already failed eight times. Nice. Looking at the rankers who continued to enter the hall, Teresa sighed. She had heard that it was not a serious matter, but it looked worse than expected, considering all of the representatives of the guilds were stuck to their chairs. I cannot help but be nervous. 
There were now less than 40 days left for mankind. She didn't know, but this meeting was supposed to be a turning point. And at that moment, a middle-aged man holding a wine glass opened his mouth. It was Patrick, an S-rank player who attended as the representative of America's Titan Guild. It seems like most of us have gathered, so let us start. And the whispers stopped as everyone looked at Patrick. As you all already know, the eighth raid attempt to enter the fourth floor has failed. Out of the raid group that involved 100 people and 15 relics, only nine returned alive. Quite the elaborate speech. The attempt had the help of 1,500 players. However, despite their support, the raid had failed once again. Why? Was it because the boss monster was overwhelmingly strong? Because there were a lot of traps? No. The final boss monster on the third floor was an ordinary monster, and there were no traps in its room. Damn it! Even a holy relic failed. So how do we break through it? Right. The problem was neither quantity nor quality. To reach the fourth floor, not just hundreds or thousands, but tens of thousands of statues had been knocked down. As I am saying again now, the raids on the second and third floors were done too hastily. In the end, you can see. How much did it cost us? Mage Maria, who was Olympus's representative, added in. If only there were enough players over level 15, the raid wouldn't fail. However, the gap that was caused by the greed to climb the tower caused the level gap between players to widen. In the end, a month passed. I guess you're right. Wasn't it all because of the Chinese side's monopoly of the magic crystals? Beck Jinho, of Dangan Guild's third raid team, growled through his teeth. The Chinese side, silent until then, began to speak. It is hard for us to ignore that statement. We only climb the tower for the sake of mankind. Misleading others without evidence is not allowed. Ten Wei, who belonged to the People's Republic, frowned in protest. Puahaha, you sound like you are giving yourself an out. Everyone here knows how many people your side killed to create a single faction called the People's Republic. If you say another word, what? What will you do? Stop. As they were about to get up, Patrick intervened. This isn't the time to bring up past incidents. There was a reality that they had to address now. This meant that this wasn't the time for them to fight. You have something in mind? Yes. There is only one way to get around this situation. Patrick's face darkened as his lips trembled at the thought of saying the words he never thought he would say. But he was determined as it was something that needed to be done. Yesterday morning, I received a call from demonic humans. They will help under one condition. At Patrick's words, there was a massive commotion in the hall. No! You want to accept their offer? They are a collection of human trash. We can never side with those bugs. Never. The representatives of each guild began to raise their voices. Currently, the influence of large guilds exceeds that of governments. This was why a cause for any action was important. One word and one action could cause infinite ripples. Everyone was reluctant to join hands with the demonic humans because of that. They are garbage, and hearing the words of garbage hurts the heart. Then, something wriggled from the shadow of the room's fire as an ominous shadow rose up. The shadow soon took on a human form. It was an old man with a thin white beard. However, the magic emanating from this man was too large to ignore. It's good that you guild people have pride, but you know you can't do it either, right? The old man asked. You impudent man! How did you get in here? Mr. Patrick, did you bring such a man into the room? I will cut off your filthy head and hang you from a tree. Various weapons were pulled out as magic was infused into them. The once quiet hall devolved into chaos in an instant. The old man clicked his tongue. There are only bloodthirsty friends here. However, if only our conditions were heard, you would change your mind. We have the power to break through the boss. Bullshit. What do you mean when your small number of men are nothing before us? The power of the demonic humans was, in actuality, not that significant. And such a small group would never be able to win against the third floor boss. Even a raid that consisted of a thousand men had been annihilated, with no one surviving longer than three days. Hmm. Wouldn't it be enough to make the numbers, then? The old man struck the ground twice with a stick that had a skull atop it. A dull noise echoed around the hall, and... Unique ability. Tomb of the Cursed Graveyard. Cracks appeared on the floor. W what 
This. People who spotted the cracks appearing were shocked. At the same time, corpses and bones that had been below the ground began to rise up one after another. Hehehe. <laughs> there are many useful corpses buried under this land. Thanks to you, we can get good quality soldiers. The skeleton soldiers, which seemed to number in the three digits, approached them. Although they had the appearance of those who had been trapped underground for many years, their swords and shields were in fine condition. This can be called an army as well. As you can see, among the demonic humans, there are many friends who are good at necromancy and summoning. Necromancy? But you want to play on such a scale? Tenway, who was mumbling, then said, No, that staff. The old man holding that staff. He had seen it before. To be precise, he saw it when he played the Tower of Trials. Oh, there's someone here that knows this? The old man proudly stroked the staff, a special item that could only be made after collecting 99 materials. It wasn't easy to make because it required bizarre and cruel items. If the synthesis was successful, this item displayed the best abilities of a necromancer. As expected, a combination of a staff of greed and necromancer would have a good chance. A ninth attempt might be possible. Mr. Tenway. No. Maria glanced over. If these people are approaching us to do some trickery, I don't think they will end it with just this, but they don't seem to be planning anything. And this plan isn't bad. Hmm. I am sorry. But I agree with the Chinese this time. Of course, there is a condition that the public shouldn't know of this. Baek Jinho spoke in agreement. One by one, the atmosphere slowly turned to one favorable to the demonic human's proposal. Teresa bit her lip while looking at the scene in front of her. How did this come to happen? No matter what, to join hands with demonic humans? She wanted to stop and not let them accept such a deal. However, with the absence of a way out, she couldn't blindly oppose it. If only Mr. Jin Hyuk was here. Then, there would be no reason to worry about this. Unlike the fakes here, he was the only real veteran to her. Considering the many things she had seen him do in the ruins, he must know how to get to the fourth floor. But, I alone cannot do it. Right. That could not happen. It was impossible to reverse the situation on her own. It was as she thought that. A blue status window activated in front of her. A video call has been requested. She usually wouldn't care about other players contacting her. But... After reading the following line, her heart began to beat like crazy. The target player is Kang Jin Hyuk. Here it was. Are you sure you want to accept the call? A call from the person she desperately needed. Mr. Jin Hyuk. With trembling hands, she pressed to accept, and a relaxed face could be seen on the other side. The figure of Jin Hyuk, who looked as confident as ever. And Jin Hyuk. What is this? Do those skeletons have osteoporosis? He started with the most sensible words. Was it because his voice was too loud? The old man heard it and became enraged. What? what did he say? What about the skeletons? Say it? You dared to make fun of my summons? Hmm. Did it come across as too harsh? But what about it? They might look strong to mediocre players, but were just cute toys to veterans. Don't use your voice from behind the screen. Come show yourself right now. In video calls, only your direct conversation partner could see your face, while unrelated parties could only hear the voice. Of course, this could be changed if both parties agreed to it. Are you fine with it? Teresa asked him. It is fine. It looks like I contacted you at a troublesome moment, but this looks interesting. Jin Hyuk nodded his head. The video call has been converted to an open call. With that short system message, a man with a strange mask appeared and silence took over the hall that had been filled with a raucous commotion. T that mask! Ruins! The one who attacked the ruins is you! Oh my, I didn't think anyone had your contact, but Teresa knew you? It was natural for them to be unable to control their excitement. A player who hid his identity behind a mask. So many people had been looking for him, but none had found a clue. Everyone wanted to catch the promising player before others got to them. This was a common thought shared by those here. Teresa was working with him, so there is a high chance that the person doesn't belong to a guild yet. Then it means that the person who gets him first is the winner. Coin, items, or money can be poured out to get him. Of course, bringing him is enough to change the face of the guild completely. Maybe this is the last chance I can get. 
The representatives of each guild gulped as they looked at each other. They looked like they were just waiting for the right time to pounce. At that moment, how amusing. The old man stepped forward. Right. I heard about it too. I wonder if you are the one who played an active part in the ruins on the first floor. But this boss we are attacking is different. In the ruins, the power of each individual monster could be strong, but their numbers weren't many. On the other hand, the third floor boss had monstrous strength along with subordinate monsters serving under it. This meant that there was a fundamental difference between this task and conquering a ruin. Hmm? Then are you saying you can, no matter how many enemies there are? Jin Hyuk asked while touching his stomach. Right. Having a large number of summoned beasts is my specialty. A large number of summons. Summoned beasts here meant the skeleton, right? He admitted that there were quite a few here, but... It must be difficult with that fake staff, though. W what It's only half done, right? I see that the adult heart and the shroud soaked in oil were omitted. T that How do you know? How do you think? That is because it looks different from the real staff of greed. The finished product with all the right ingredients would have a red gem studded under the skull on the right. Above all, the quality of skeleton soldiers is too low. The finished item. You've seen it? The old man mumbled in shock. The shock must be too much. Even his beard was shaking. Curious? If you want, I can tell you where to find the rest of the ingredients. Really? Where? Ahem. The old man almost completely gave in to his desires, but managed to hold himself back. Because even a single word said here would be acknowledging his defeat. Jin Hyuk, who saw that, smiled bitterly as if he knew this would happen. After all, the opponent was an empty shell with no power. At least he was using his head and tried to take a share from the guilds by fooling them with words of plausibility. Just looking at his half-completed staff, his intentions here were evident. There was just a shallow intention of stealing items or coins under the guise of a down payment. As things were becoming slightly strange, the old man grit his teeth. Fine. For now, I will leave you. No matter who you are, I will surely repay you for this shame. Wow. Old man. It is the first time I have actually seen someone like you. What? No. Aren't you a bit embarrassed when saying that? I will surely repay you for this shame. If such a line was written for an anime from the 90s, the broadcaster would come to beat you. If he had just vanished, Jin Hyuk wouldn't have cared. But the problem with this guy was his mouth. You... The old man glared at Jin Hyuk as if he wanted to kill him. But it was only for a moment. Fat! The shadows rose up. The next time we meet in person, we will see if you can be as relaxed as you are now. And... Those here. Be mindful of this. The fact that we are the only force with strength. The figure of the old man was then swallowed up by the darkness. The hall fell silent once more. So much had happened in such a short span of time that everyone there needed a moment to process it. It doesn't matter if you leave the task to fail in the hands of such a clumsy person, but personally, I don't think that is a good option. Jin Hyuk shrugged his shoulders at Patrick. I know. But we had no options. Why was there no other option? Jin Hyuk said again, Leave it to me. I will take care of the job without having to work together with the demonic humans to attack the tower. Ye, you don't mean it. Patrick was shocked. Was it possible to attack the tower alone? If it wasn't said by the player who solo conquered the ruins, these words would have been considered a bad joke. Jin Hyuk nodded his head without hesitation. It is possible because this was why he had gone to the underground floor. T -t -t then how do we pay you for it? You don't have to give me anything. Uh, let me go in alone. If you lock the entire area down so no other players can come, I don't care about being paid. At Jin Hyuk's words, Patrick's mouth dropped. It was from shock at how lenient the terms were. Why are you even doing this? That is... Jin Hyuk glanced at Teresa. I just want to do the right thing for the sake of humanity and my colleagues. As soon as he said those words, Jin Hyuk had to pinch his thigh. Ah, damn it. Just saying that makes my legs go weak. That old man from a moment ago must have felt like this. However, unlike Jin Hyuk, who didn't like his own words, the other representatives looked at him kindly. Teresa bit her lip. Her lips kept twitching. Ha <laughs> ha. 
This is... As the representative of the guild, I have nothing to say. So cool. You are a true hero. We also need to reflect on ourselves. Ha. Huh. I started with that mindset. I don't know how we ended up like this. Admiration and resilience. The representatives of the large global guilds were now reflecting on their own selves. Just one word, and they were misunderstanding everything by themselves. It is fine if I act like this. His reason for not accepting a down payment wasn't for the sake of humanity. It wasn't even for the aim of taking care of the guilds. Jin Hyuk glanced at the camera. Currently, all screens and conversations are being recorded. A player who gave up all rewards for the sake of mankind. How much could they benefit from such a phrase? He didn't know for sure, but it'll likely be several times more than what the guilds would have offered as a reward. You idiots, that will be the down payment. I am not the kind of person who misses the big things to go after little things. Think about it. How much would these guilds even be able to give him a down payment at this early stage of the game? Maybe one low-level relic? Or coins? If I have time, I can get those things by myself. However, a solid position in the public's eyes with all the benefits derived from it was a sure gain. Furthermore, first broadcast function. If someone succeeds in the solo raid that failed for the others, just the thought was thrilling. Jin Hyuk's heart started beating with a pleasant rhythm as if it was celebrating knowing the lottery numbers for the next week in advance. And, if I succeed this time, I would like to see you all and have a meal together. Oh, of course. We are looking forward to it. I wish that day would come. Everyone added their own words with hope on their faces. They looked genuinely happy, but no matter how happy. Only I can do it? Jin Hyuk gulped and wiped his mouth. It was then. Ha! 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 Are you going to kill me? Elise turned towards him with a gasping face. Ah, right. She was forgotten. During the video call with Teresa, bugs were still climbing up, so he made her deal with them. As a result, she had used up all her remaining magic and was on the verge of fainting. It is fine to see you complain about something else for a change. If you were really going to die, you wouldn't have the energy to complain. But this is fine, seeing you all fine. Did d you that would comfort me? This... this is a slavery contract. Elise looked helpless. What? But to feel remorse, one had to have a conscience. Ch. What do you see me as? Do you think I am messing around? Anyway, I was thinking of buying a magic supplement from the coin exchange and giving it to you. Although it was the cheapest one, it didn't matter since Elise couldn't see the coin exchange. What would she even be able to do if he insisted it was the most expensive one? But, sorry, but such supplements don't work for me. Elise shook her head. What? Didn't I say that you cannot domesticate me? What? what is that? <laughs> don't worry. I will take back the mana I've used up. Elise smiled brightly and her teeth shone. Why does this sight feel ominous? It definitely felt wrong. When he had met the first time, she had said, Tasty. And your blood smells delicious, right? She said those two things. Man. This was dangerous. Jin Hyuk took a few steps back without even realizing it. With the sound of liquid dripping down. Finally, the blood donation, which saved a life, was done. Hey hey. It was yummy. Satisfied, Elise wiped the drops of blood from her lips with a handkerchief. On the other hand, Jin Hyuk was caressing the tooth marks on his neck with a complicated expression. Sting. His head felt dizzy. Just how much blood did she suck? Next, it was time to stop by the coin exchange. Jin Hyuk's eyes moved across the screen. He had to buy a few items to get everything he wanted. Exponential pill. C. 11500. Unknown cube. D. 2500. Ability booster. D. 5000. Cobweb of Carl Tourus Forest, F-300. Runny Nose of the Twin-Headed Ogre 100 Milliliths, F-300. Jin Hyuk bought the items in an instant. Since he had already decided what to get, there was no hesitation. You bought a bunch of useless things. Elise tilted her head. Her face was clearly asking why he was buying so much garbage for so many coins. Well, those who didn't know would all react like that. Look here. Jin Hyuk smiled and walked to the edge. You want to head down? Yes, I am going to get crazy busy from now on. He should enjoy the day, 
especially as he will be heading into the hole now. After saying that, he took a step forward. The wind buffeted hard against his body. The gust of wind was so strong that even the element of fire couldn't maintain its form. Because of this, even his vision wasn't working right. Any solutions? Why aren't you answering me? Say something. No. Are you thinking of committing suicide here? Elise screamed while holding onto Jin Hyuk's shoulder. She was a true ancestor of the vampires. Even if the earth was hit by a meteor, she would probably live through it. But the human body wasn't like that. If he died instantly, it was good, but if he was lucky, he might survive down there with a non function body. Gravity magic or flying magic is too much. He didn't even know when he would reach the bottom, so using those magics would be a waste. Perhaps it would work with the player avatar body he had when this was all a game, but now it was impossible. Despite Elise's urgings, Jin Hyuk didn't answer. He simply kept counting internally. 17 minutes and 13 seconds. 17 minutes 20 seconds. 17 minutes 44 seconds. The time was observed diligently as if a clock was in his head. And finally, now. Jin Hyuk, who had been silent, shouted, Elise activates love? Reverse gravity. In an instant, Jin Hyuk's body defied gravity. The timing of its activation left his body approximately one meter away from the ground. He would have met a terrible end if he had been just a little late. Done. Now that I am at a height where I can jump and get off, there is no need to use magic. Uh, uh. Ely waved her hand, allowing the gravity to return to normal and leaving Jin Hyuk to land on the ground. First, my eyes. Not even a speck of light was visible in the surrounding darkness. Element of fire is activated. Four balls of fire rose up in four separate directions. The place was a moist place filled with mud and stones. The deepest part of the Tower of Trials. His heart kept pounding loudly as he walked into the darkness and said, Why don't you come out now? With these low-level bugs, no matter how many come, it will be useless. Isn't it time for you to understand? This splendid performance was just to summon the master of this underground. And it was then that a reply came. Oh. You know about me? Someone answered from the dark, making his skin crawl. A feeling of intimidation similar to when he met Elise. Indeed, a vessel which contains the body of a god. Answer me. I asked if you knew about me. The magic in that voice grew stronger. Of course I know. I have heard the hounds roaming the desert and the biting sounds in my ear. Desert Hound. Those words are used to address the Egyptian god, Anubis. Since you are the first human to come here, I decided to wait for a while before killing you. But you are forcing my hand. I have no intention of flirting around either. Doesn't the group dynamic work better when the one above everyone shows himself? The hive was a special item that could multiply insects indefinitely. That item was why the underground was known as the best hunting ground. Amazing. You know about that too. I know more than that. If possible, it would be better if we didn't hide behind bugs and stuff and came out directly to save each other's time. Pwahaha, are you saying that you want to go against me? Well, this was an expected reaction. Considering the difference between them, Jin Hyuk was likely like a little child in Anubis' eyes. In the end, if he wanted to copy its ability, he would have to taunt it. Anubis's Judgment Description Anubis asks three questions, the target answers three questions, and the curse is activated. All stats are reduced by 50% for those who are cursed, and all unique abilities and skills are sealed for one minute. A deceptive unique ability that had an absolute roll-on effect, and for him to acquire that skill. Copy condition. Destroy the vessel containing Anubis's consciousness by exhausting his patience. Even if his physical body was just a stone statue imparted with part of a god's consciousness, it would be impossible for him to run out of patience. However, the condition could feasibly be achieved through the most extreme of probabilities. I am empowered to ask the most powerful questions in this world. A heavy layer of magic filled the entire underground level. Shit! Elise's face became stiff. She was one of the absolute beings that existed in the tower. If Elise was at the apex then this opponent was one of the apex characters of mythology. This wasn't an enemy that could be taken lightly. I will take care of him, so in the meantime, try to find a way out. Uh? 
I can manage to survive, so you need to run away. What? Are you worried about me? She was the size of a Pomeranian. How could she stand in front of him so proudly? Like a dog trying to protect its master. What are you worried about? Promises cannot be kept if you die. What you're about to do will lead to that. Elise screamed in annoyance. Do not worry and just watch. What? Is it really the time to act proud? It isn't about being prideful. I am just asking you to trust me. He'll show her. Just who was the player she had made a contract with, and who would be smiling in the end. A loud roar filled the air as a three-meter-tall stone statue moved. Its appearance was modeled after that of a desert jackal. The underground's boss monster, Anubis. Interesting. Did you hear anything about me from the true ancestor on your shoulder? Anubis asked a question. The atmosphere changed rapidly. This feeling. That's right. As expected, was he going to accept it? Anubis's unique ability, Anubis judgment, is activated. The caster would now ask three questions. The conditions of the skill would then be satisfied. Enough. Jin Hyuk smiled. Right. Right. How else would I be able to know this place? I see. Anubis nodded his jackal head. If it was the true ancestor, then she would be able to know everything about the underground. Is your purpose for coming here to claim the hive? Well, something like that. If I claim it and sell it on the market, I can get a good price. If it was an item that allowed the infinite multiplication of insects, then it would be worth the price. That was the second question. Then I will ask you one last question, Grave Robber. It is the natural habit of small creatures to be blinded by treasure. But did you think you could escape alive after entering my realm? Last but not least, a boring question. Of course, it had to be this. If I can't get rid of you, I will bite my tongue and die. Jin Hyuk spat out his answer, and as he did, the power of the divine manifested. All requirements have been met. Anubis's judgment has been activated. All stats are reduced by 50%. The use of unique abilities and skills is sealed for one minute. Status windows appeared one after another. At the same time, he could feel the magic in his body diminishing. His sharp senses felt dulled, and access to his skills was cut off. But, it wasn't finished yet. The true terror of this ability was what followed. Anubis chooses Judgment of the Great Player. Introduce yourself. This is the Great Player that will be my hands and feet. Anubis proclaimed in a deep, low voice, and at the same time, Powerful magic surged forward, incomparable to the magic exuded by the insects. The entire underground level shook. A great warrior was chosen by the divine and obeyed their orders. Therefore, Jin Hyuk's opponent would have the power to crush any enemy that stood in its way. Its pale skin and dazzling claws stood out immediately. Isn't his level around 71? The level of the blood clan he had faced in the ruins was around level 50 or so, with a few that were a bit higher. However, the situation now was completely different from then. Due to Anubis's judgment, his stats were halved and his abilities sealed. Jin Hyuk held his dagger without much thought. Stop drooling. Do you want to eat my head that badly? The giant mantis quickly slid over the sand, instantly narrowing the distance between them. Its scythe-like arms were aimed at his neck. But... Jin Hyuk twisted the path of the attack using his dagger, making it only cut the air. The giant mantis body leaned forward as its center of gravity was utterly compromised. You're full of gaps, you insect. What could it do with its eyes looking around at a 360 degree angle? It didn't even have enough time to react. Jin Hyuk's eyes gleamed with a hidden smile while, at the same time, his dagger slashed through the gaps in the giant mantis guard. The sound of its flesh breaking apart was accompanied by a bright green fluid spurting out. This damage was only possible since he had aimed at its joints instead of its skin. It was screaming desperately already with just one leg hurt. Jin Hyuk pulled his dagger out and widened the distance. You were looking down on me for being human? Well, now you've lost one leg. This is the nature of some strong monsters. They looked down on their opponents and inevitably got tricked as their supposed prey proved stronger than expected. The giant mantis's steps flattered. It growled with its mouth as its body's fluids dripped to the sands below. It was just for a short time, however. 
its severed leg regenerated. This always makes me speechless. Each time its limb was cut, it would grow back. Jin Hyuk staggered forward and stood in front of the giant mantis that was struggling to stand back up, and as it repeatedly tried to get up, one, two, three. Once the enraged giant mantis finally got up, he would defeat it again. He immediately repeated the same action. One, two, three. The point of this was never to make it difficult for himself. It was a relaxed atmosphere as a slight smile appeared on his lips. To finish it, he put on an expression that seemed to say, You won't be able to defeat me in a hundred years. It felt like his thighs were going to explode. But it was fine. This moment of heaping insults upon the strong was the reason why veterans existed in this world. H How can this happen? Anubis let out a scream, stained with anger and shock. A fight he was sure would be his victory was now going in the opposite direction. It was difficult for even Elise to believe. I knew he was strong, but this strong. He had been a special person since the first time they met. She admitted it. Even Bayliss, among the best in her clan, struggled futilely against him and was defeated. However, that had been when all of his abilities could be used. It should be a completely different story in this scenario where his stats were nerfed and his unique abilities and skills sealed. To play with his opponents only using his senses and reflexes. Elise gulped at this unbelievable sight. Moreover, wasn't his opponent a designated warrior from Anubis? It felt instead that Jin Hyuk was immensely superior. Elise's eyes took in Jin Hyuk's movement as he repeatedly sat and stood in front of the giant mantis. Really, if it is him, it can be done. The downfall of the Ataraxia family and her hatred for the families that had caused it. Perhaps it would become a reality. Maybe he could make her dream come true. Elise's heart began to beat quietly again. Anticipation, excitement, and a sense of exaltation spread through her body. At that moment, the giant mantis's legs were cleanly severed and flew into the sky. Jin Hyuk wiped off the bodily fluids that had stained his dagger on the floor. Nice. This way, both claws could be removed. The giant mantis was backing away. It was a rare sight for an insect-type monster that was naturally belligerent. What? Can it be stopped? Didn't you like to hunt? It had been running around with the desire to kill him but was giving up already? Of course, he did understand. Hunting was fun when you were chasing something, not when you were the one being chased. And this time, it was the prey, and he was the hunter. What are you doing? Do not back down! Fight back! Anubis's voice filled the air. He was clenching his hand in frustration. However, the giant mantis didn't obey its master's orders due to its state of fear. What are you doing? Run, quickly! Jin Hyuk placed his dagger's blade on his shoulder. He then smiled as he began counting down from ten. Run as far as you can. Though that was an impossibility. A sharp scream. The body of the giant mantis collapsed with a large hole through it. No matter how powerful its regeneration, it would no longer be effective now. No matter how tough it was, a missing heart could not be regenerated. The great warrior of Anubis has fallen. Level has risen. You have acquired the Magic Book of the Pelteros Principality. Acquired a mid-grade Magic Stone. And with this, he had gained another level. In addition, a Magic Book that only appeared on the middle floors of the tower appeared here. Oh, look at this. Jin Hyuk was slightly surprised. He had defeated dozens of opponents, but had never been given such a good reward. Usually, the normal drops would be weapons or an item with some kind of effect. Why did the gap between the reward quality widen so suddenly? Jin Hyuk immediately realized the reason. It's probably thanks to the luck stat and everything else I've gathered. This wasn't a coincidence. The small skills he had continuously gathered helped him achieve the present results. Exhilarating because it means my efforts weren't in vain. Jin Hyuk picked up the old book lying next to the body. A chill spread into his fingertips. It was cold. The pure cold key will paralyze some of your fingertips. The magic book of the Peltaros Principality was something that contained ice magic, so it was traded at a high price by almost all players. Although over 90% of players wouldn't succeed in making a single snowflake, much less successfully use ice magic. The moisture in the air froze, and powder-like ice fragments began to form in the air. Unique abilities and skills can be used again. LV-1 Ice Formation is activated. Huh? 
Why did it feel like a dog was barking? What did you just say? H how? How? I studied a lot of textbooks in the past. Of course, learning a new language was never easy. Many people couldn't even use English properly after 12 years of studying. But that was the story of a passionless education. This is a study I really wanted to do. Because it was fun. It was only through learning this that he could become strong. So he practiced it to death. Over and over until he became stronger than even mages. The scattered fragments of ice magic began to take a single shape. Five ice arrows, each one two meters in length, all beautifully crafted, awaiting the command of their creator. I must admit that you are no ordinary human being. But you don't believe that those ice toys can be used to fight me, right? I know. What? I know it is useless. He could not kill Anubis with what he had. No. It wouldn't even cause a wound on the divinity's skin. Like Elise, he was a top-tier existence in the tower. But, but aren't you also nervous right now? Above all, you are not able to attack other living beings without using the insects. You must be annoyed right now. Anubis kept his silence. He had meant to intimidate his opponent, but somehow the human knew everything. He was currently in a state with many restrictions. What was more interesting was that, even though the human realized his attacks wouldn't work, he wasn't backing down at all. Why? He was curious. What were the human's thoughts? What was the secret behind it? However, contrary to the expectation of Anubis, Jin Hyuk's words were... For... Fun? Fun? A sandbag that wouldn't die no matter how hard I hit it. How could I give it up? Your arrogance reaches the sky, human. Anubis said as his expression changed slightly. That was something Jin Hyuk did not miss. Fine. Like a human with high self-esteem, he's weak against provocations. If he continued to just do this, he would successfully finish the copy conditions. And the proof of that was... Anubis pulled out the hive relic, which was the size of a basketball. It was a special item with the power of multiplying insects. Was he going to use it? Since Jin Hyuk had eliminated his chosen warrior, this was his only option. Tear that damned mortal to pieces and swallow him. Anubis infused magic into the hive, and flying insects began to pour out of the hive with disturbing sounds. At the same time, the ice arrows above Jin Hyuk's head vanished. The air was filled with a loud roar. Dozens of insects were skewered by the ice arrows and lodged into the ground. All of them were hit. As expected, it isn't too late to try this. The ice arrow was able to pierce the insects but failed to take down the hive. But that didn't matter. Victory and defeat in battle depended on who could endure the longest. Sparks of flame appeared in Jin Hyuk's left hand. In his right hand, thin stalks of ice began to rise. And right then, element of fire, B, and ice formation, A, are fused. Jin Hyuk placed his hands together as the two polar opposite elemental energies ran rampant. The air began to change rapidly. Even the insects were forced to move back at this unknown magic. Anubis frowned. Fusion successful. You have acquired the skill, Daylight, AA. With this, the chapter ends here. If you want the next part, comment down below and hit subscribe to know what happens next. See you guys soon.